Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. And so we're just going to continue um, from where we stopped as much as possible. Okay. We're just going to We're just going to continue from where we stop as much as possible. Okay, so we're going to start with question five for today. We're going to start with question five. Now, the question is, put this up here, fine, good. So they can see, me. okay, let me put it center. Okay, camera to the center so I can see myself. Okay. Now, a library is considered the way it issue books. Hmm. The librarians are planning to use the RFID rather than the barcodes. Now, this speaks volume. Now, this is straight up from the textbook, chapter two, right? Direct data entry. No question asked. Like, that's what we'll be doing. And we promise that we can, we can just bring you up to speed to the textbook because I'm not here to just do past paper, give you answer. I, I don't know how to do that because... I want you guys to know where you can find your answers in the test book. So it makes it easier. It gives the confidence when you're going back to your test book. Right? Now, let's look at the LFID and the barcodes. Quickly on our test book, I have it open right here. And um, that is chapter two. Chapter two, chapter two. Going as fast as I can, like the speed of light. That's how some students are reading. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, I, I had a student who was reading like that one time. We just to be dead, but it's what you say is reading. <laughs> it was funny. I had to laugh. It was funny. It just because few hours in the exam. Yeah, okay. Um, let's talk about our FID. Okay. Um so the barcodes and the our FIDs. I think we have them here. Yes, we have them here, right? Now, we'll talk about the, out, the advantages of the RFID over the barcodes. We're not looking at the barcodes. We're not looking at the out, RFID. And one of them is bug detection, right? Is possible. That is, is able to detect several tags at the same time, which is not possible in the barcode. From the barcode, you have to bring out the item and you have to place on it. Okay, to, to scan it one at a time. Okay, now another thing is, um, it's a very fast read rate, right? It's very fast to read. Just, you do it on this, it's reading very fast, unlike the uh, the barcode. It is a very robust and reliable technology. It, it's not something that gets damaged easily. Okay, and no line of sight is necessary, which is very, very key because you can read it from a distance, unlike the barcode that you have to read from a very close read. For example, if this was an item, let's say this is um sprinkles, right? Okay, um, no offense to sprinkles, but let's assume this is a sprinkle, right? And so you you you, you buy the sprinkle and you want to check how much is the sprinkle. So you have to bring it very close to like this, and it takes spam. But in the half edit, you don't have to do that. Just just sprinkle you and oh, 10,000. Like just so, like that, right? Okay, so that's just what we mean. The out, but it's mean for us to go to the barcodes, do so. Let's look at the barcodes for the barcodes right here. Um, this event could be that it's not foolproof, so um, barcodes can be can when we not foolproof, it cannot be swiped around on items. That's what it means. Um, it's expensive system to administer it can be relatively it can be easily damaged unlike the um the R the rfid which is your radio frequency identification that is robust and reliable just an idea okay about that now so when we go back to this how many marks is this this is four marks so you're invariably looking at a four pointer okay and another thing to add to this is greater security. It has what we call a greater security, okay? And obviously it can be able to capture, but we've talked about that as much as possible. Um, it can also be reused, can be written, 
It's a good one as well. Um, it's more accurate than backwards, right? Okay. Um, I think that's for that. It's also faster to read. Just to you can just look at them and just break down, break it down as much as possible, right? Question six. Laptop computers use solid state drive rather than hard disk drive. Hmm. Describe two disadvantages of using an SSD rather than a HDD in a laptop computer. Now, I'm going to show you. How do I even know? Mr. Jairo, so don't ask me all the time. How do I even know if my laptop is SSD? If it's HDD, how do I even know? Some people are telling me there is no SSD. How do I even begin to find it if my laptop is SSD? If it's HDD? Well, we're in love because this class is recorded and I get to show you if your laptop is SSD or HDD. So what do you do? Quickly type in the control panel. And then you click on system and security. I have to see to myself. Then, um, so right here, we're going to search for Dix. Okay, so Windows right here. And under the Windows tools, we're going to find Dix Defragmenter. Dix Defragmenter. Okay, let me move this here. So I'm going to open it here. Now, if you check this, now you can see this is these are two media types, right? Now, let me show you something. If I click on this PC, you're going to see that these are two uh, media types right here. This is my internal or fixed hard drive. That reminds me of chapter two. We have Portable hard drive, and we have fixed hard drive. You might want to check it out. It's right there. Sorry, chapter three. We have chapter three, not chapter two. Chapter two is input and output. Chapter three is storage. Okay. Apologies for the mix up, but yeah, chapter three. Okay. So you see a fixed um, portable drive, and then um, fixed drive, fixed hard drive, and then we have the portable hard drive. Obviously, your portable hard drive are your external drives as much as possible. They're your external drives, okay? Then we have um, the fix, which is the one that is um, inside your system unit, right? Inside your computer, okay? So now for both of them, my own uses what we call a solid state drive. But my SD card, right, uses what we call a hard disk drive. It's an old SD card. Newer ones come with a solid state drive, right? It's an old SD card. Using it sometime with my Android device, just kept it up with me. So these are ways to actually check what kind of media type you use it. Very, very helpful to know if you're using an SSD or a HDD. Okay. I felt like sharing that so you guys will know, right? Um okay. So this is chapter three, right? Two disadvantages. Using SSD rather than HDD. Now I want to talk about two things, data transfer rates and data access time. I think we have a student. So we have the data transfer rate and data access time. Data transfer rate talks about the time taken to be able to transfer your files from the computer and data access time talks about the time taken to be able to assess a specific information on the computer. Now, obviously, for an SSD, both of them are faster than a HDD. But we're not there to talk about um, the um, advantages. We need to talk about disadvantages. Now, that's a very tricky one because you would think SSD, they, they, they all have all the books checks because what then becomes disadvantages? Now, in the textbook, I think they gave us one. Let's see how we can be able to dissect that one into two. Um, chapter three. We take this, my camera here, so you can see. Okay. Um, chapter three in the textbook is somewhere around 
solid state drives technology somewhere around here. Yes. The medias and devices. Um, you can see the advantages here. Reliable, lighter, um, lower power consumption, much cooler. Now look at data access time. It's about, it's only what? 0 0.1 millisecond compared to what? 10 milliseconds for HDD. Data transfer, transfer speed. Data transfer speed for SDD is much faster. I've talked about that as well as much as possible, but I need to show you guys that. Uh, nope, not there. Disadvantages. Now watch this. Now for disadvantages, we talk about longevity. Okay. Um. Then most of us are not using it because of the longevity, and then again. Another thing about the SSD, this is the new technology as much as possible. So you would expect that in terms of read and write, it's more limited, right? It's more limited, okay? Because they tend to have that limited um, number of read and write because now this is what I'm talking about. This is most solid state device are um, consecutively rated at only 20 gigabyte width um, right operation per day over three years period. And we call it as SSD endurance. For this reason, it is said that the SSD technology is still not used in all servers. Why are they not using it? Where huge numbers of right operation takes place every day. So because of that, some organizations are careful, right? And then again, we have issues of durability, which, um, is still being addressed by numbers of manufacturers to improve them with the new technology. Um, but we, have, we still have to talk about them as a disadvantage. And then again, one thing that comes to mind, apart from all this, is the fact that they are so expensive, more than the HDD. Okay, they're expensive. Okay, so that should actually be factored in when you're talking about your disadvantages. Hopefully it's two. Thank God it's two. I think I... I I don't have anything to talk about. I think I'm I'm all dried up on, on that, right? So, but you could break it down, right? You could break, if there's talk about three, you could actually break out what I've said into three. I think you should get your mark. Question seven. A patient has an injury and the doctor As much as possible, let me see. Okay. And the doctor, and the doctor treating him needs to find out information about the patient. Most of the data he needs to collect is of personal data. Hmm. Probably the president, or probably a rich kid. A politician kid, right? So their personal data. Okay, so ob ob um, the opposite party will not use it against, <laughs> you know, politics and and um, whatever, right? The data collected is protected by data protection legislation. Hmm. Most data protection acts include the principle that data should be kept confidential and secure. Hmm. Doctors are sworn to secrecy, but that does not mean that if they see something wrong, you don't report it. It's their job to keep all confidential information, but not at the expense of endangering people's lives. You need to know the difference, okay? For those of you who's going to be watching this, okay. Um, this is give me a minute. This is chapter. Chapter eight. No? Yes, chapter eight. Chapter eight in the textbook. Yeah. Chapter eight. So under chapter eight, we have e-safety. 
under the ECFT, we have the first thing on the ECFT, personal data. Personal data. I want to be sure. Chapter 8. Let's go to Chapter 8. Oh, I love this game. Let's see. I'm putting it as a game, so it's cool, right? Um, Chapter 8. Let's go. That's how most students are reading, like this. They're always reading. That's how I'm reading. Nice. <laughs> okay. Safety and security, right? Fiscal safety. So, tell you not fiscal safety. Yes. I got it. Okay. Uh, uh, e safety, right? Okay. Uh, I'm just just kidding. Okay. Data protection, right? So, most countries have their form of data protection art. Okay, and this is legislation designed to protect individuals to prevent incorrect and in inaccurate data being stored. Hmm. Now let's look at those data protection acts. They are right here. Data must be fairly and lawfully processed. Data must only be processed for the stated purpose. Data must be adequate, relevant, and not excessive. Data must be accurate. Data must not be kept longer than necessary. It must also be processed with accordance in accordance with the data subject right, it's what is kept secure. Don't leak people's information. You're a doctor. What they kept secure. They, they can sue you for that. Right? Data must not be transferred to another country unless they have, they also have what adequate word protection. Okay, so these are the data, each data uh, protection art. You just talk about four, right? Okay. They made it easier for you. They, they have talked about one already. So you have to talk about out of your seven, you have to pick four. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. List four other fiscal uh, principles of the data protection part. So I've talked about that as well. Okay. Um, the B part. Explain what is meant by personal data. Hmm. Include two examples of personal data in your answer. Hmm. Personal data. Still chapter eight. After data protection art, the next thing that comes is what? Personal data. This is why you have to read the test book. Because if you don't read the test books, there's no way you're going to have the, you're going to miss out on all this form on the test book. You're going to miss out on this form. Now we'll talk about data, uh, personal data. This refers to data consigning a living person. In fact, these are those features that um, elements that can be able to identify a person. It's very, very important. Okay. The table said they refer to data consigning a living person who can be identified from those data. What are those data? Your name. Who can identify you by your name? The way, the way they call your name. Told you, you turn back. Jesse, you turn back. That's him. You start running. FBI. Right? Okay. Um, your email address. Who can identify you by? Or your email address. Okay. Um, your IP address. Okay, it's right here. Your IP address. Okay. Um, your date of birth. Don't put, I, I don't like, I, the IP address is based on a network, right? It's, although people can use it to track you, right? But then again, if you're off that network, they lose um, your exact location, okay? But your passport number, your, your ID card, your passport, your date of birth, um, your banking details, photograph of you in school uniform, those are personal data, okay? They can identify you, they can identify the school that you're going to. So explanation is one mark. Example one, example two is one mark. One, one mark, that's three marks. So don't start fighting so many stories, okay? So that's three marks. Explain why data should be kept confidential and secured. And that's four marks. Why should it be kept confidential and secured? 
Why do you think all oh, what we have mentioned, ID card, passport number, email address, your name, photographs, okay? Why do you feel, or we have to explain why those data should be kept confidential and secure? Hmm. Now, let's go to the test book. They didn't tell us that. But now, look at it. They didn't tell us that. Now, and this is what I like, one thing I like about ICT. Because they won't tell you everything. But you have to use what you know, apply it to answer the question. Hmm. Why it should be kept confidential and secure is because you can identify me with those data. Michael, Jesse, Todu, Michael, Frank, I told. So you can identify me by it. Okay? It can link personally to me. My email address links personally to me. I'm browsing on the network. You can use that to, to, to track my location. Why should we keep confidential and secure? It can protect my sensitive data. Don't forget, sensitive data are also referred to as personal data. But it goes beyond the personal data because my DNA, biometrics, my gender, my political views, my religion. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Right? I'm not ashamed of it. But I'm entitled to my own opinion. There are some countries that they may not even like to hear that you're supporting maybe the Democrat or the Republican. They don't want that. Mm -hmm. Right? So, as much as possible, it needs to be kept confidential. Why should it be kept confidential and secure? Because I could suffer harm. We saw what happened in the election. If this was an e-voting, nothing of that will happen. These are applicable to this applicable question. None of that will happen. Just because I wanted to vote for my own party that I support, I'm entitled to what I support. You shouldn't have to force me or coerce me to support your party. I'm, I'm, I'm not bringing politics to this, but I'm just trying to explain this topic the way possible best I can. It's part of the assessment objective. And that is assessment objective three for any teacher watching this as well. Check it out. Because I'm, 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 I'm meant to present a reasonable conclusion. I'm meant to analyze it, evaluate it, make reason, judgment and present a final conclusion. So I can suffer harm. We saw what happened in Nigeria. All because I wanted to vote for the party I choose. It's sensitive. And that is why it has to be confidential and secure. People should not even know what I support. And that is why it needs to be an e-voting system. Countries have it. You don't need to know. I just have to vote in my own comfort of my home. And that's why you need to be confidential. I need to be kept secure. People could use it in, in the medical firm. If people know some sudden illness or sickness I have, they can use it against me. That could that can damp a lot of things. Why does it need to be kept confidential and secure? Because if I work in an agency, a security agency, I need my information to be kept confidential and secure. If, I'm a, if, I'm a, if, I'm a, if I am an FBI agent, I work in the security service, my information needs to be kept confidential and secure. Because if people know who I am, or they, of course they know who I am, but if they know where I live, they can, they can trace my location, then they can come into my home. They can harm my family, they can blackmail my families. And that is why my data, my personal data need to be kept 
confidential and secure. I'm sorry that I'm not taking it personal, but I'm just explaining the way I possibly can because I can relate to this. I can relate to it. I've seen someone access data on people and they use it to blackmail them, attack them, put them under duress. The that is why. If I'm to explain this, that is why it needs to be kept confidential and secure. There's no way around it. It needs to be kept confidential and secure. As students, your identity needs to be kept confidential and secure. Because we have to protect you. We have to protect your information. We don't just publicize them. We don't just give out the location. Oh, uh, this is this, this where this person is. No, it's confidential. Nobody can just come in and just, oh, I want to know the whereabouts. I want to know where to do leaves. I want to know where JC leaves. No, you, you, you can't get that. It's confidential and secure. Okay. Okay, enough time with that. Let's all see your faces. Let's smile a bit. Let's smile a bit. All right. Uniform resource locator are used to locate websites and resources. Okay, somebody's joining in right now. Okay, to locate website and resources. A teacher needs to find a teaching guide from the Cambridge Assessment International Education to download a teaching guide. She types in this. Now, um, just to show you what I'm talking about, I just want to show you. So this is the Cambridge website um, for teachers as much as possible, where we plan our lessons. You guys are actually exam. You guys are already leaving, so there's nothing to hide, right? To so where we plan our lessons from came from the British Council, um, learning and revisions. They give us we download it. We dissect it. The scheme of work for examination from 2023. We dissect it, plan it, take all our own the way we want to do it as much as possible. Okay. Um, this is the teacher's guide that guides us on how to teach you the best way possible. Okay, um, so if you look at the site, this is school support, and there are a lot of links here, right? We have a lot of them here. Um, this is for ICT, right? And here we have, um, if I go back, I have examination resource. My examination resource is where you see all your past papers are there. So far, nothing has been released, okay? Um, you have the syllabus and specimen materials. That's where you see your specimen papers. That's where they come out from. Further guidance about grading and changes to our syllabus. You see that you see it there as well. Um, the threshold is not out yet, but we're using the 2019 as a job. Obviously, it's going to be 260. So all these are just is to give us an idea on how well um on how well to be able to serve you guys better. Okay, you can only have access to this if you are British Cambridge teacher, right? So these are lot. These are personal resources for only teachers, community phone where you can be able to ask questions, to share with other teachers from all over the world and just expand right So I'm just giving you just um a sneak peek of just what we do to prepare you guys. We'll, we'll go to class, we we'll go to class fully prepared to start guys better. Okay. All right. So um all right en enough of this. Let's go back to the question, shall we? All right. Okay, they said um so the so the, the 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 teacher types in Cambridge and org slash this now write down only parts of the URL which shows the file name hmm, and teaching guide. Which chapter in the textbook? Mm, ding, 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 ding. Chapter get it? Chapter eight. Mm -hmm. Chapter 8. Let's check it. Okay. Funny enough, the question is question 8. Question 8, chapter 8. Okay, how, how cool is that? Right? How cool is that? 
so chapter eight it's right here um somewhere around security of data so don't bother security of data um those things are also really like this. what are you doing now so i'm reading like this nice <laughs> okay <laughs> all right um no this is not it. um Okay, nope. Is it chapter eight? I'm thinking chapter ten. Is it chapter ten? No, it should be chapter eight. Let me see. Mm, two jam horses. Nope, nope, no two jam horses, no fishing. Chapter eight. Chapter ten. It's chapter ten. Okay, maybe I didn't get this one correctly. Chapter ten. I think chapter ten it is. It's labeled exactly that. So it's somewhere. That's net to get now. Actually. Yes, chapter 10. Okay, yeah, chapter 10. Um, okay, so we have this, right? Now, they said web browser use what we call URL to accept websites, right? Retrieve files and so on. Now, URLs are text addresses used to accept website. So you type in on the URL um, bar. Now, a URL is typed into the, ad the browser address bar in the following format. This is the protocol HTTP, the website address, the path, the path simply talks about the directory or your folder. And then you have your file name. So the protocols can either be HTTP or HTTPS. Hyperlinks, let me just quickly go to hyperlink. Hyperlink simply means to um to navigate between web pages, right? And they are usually seen as blue underlined text or a small picture. Or it is small picture, although this can be easily eliminated with an external CSS. Okay. Now um we have on the website address is broken down into the following parts. We have the domain host, domain name, right? And which is the name of your website. We have domain type, which is .com, .org, likes of that. Okay. We have the path, which is what the web page. So about like the folder, right? And the file name is the item of the web page. So you need to know how this works. From the protocol, the website address, which is broken down to domain host, domain name, domain type. Then you part the file name. Hmm. Let's come back to this question so that we can find an understanding of this. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now, they said, so we have this, write only the part of the URL which shows the file name of the teaching word guide. So with this, which is the file name, what I've explained, which is the file name? Which is the file name? Are you there? Which is the file name? Because we talked about the file name is the item. Wait, okay. um, so I have the, the, the file name. Yes, I'm asking which in this in this URL, which is the file name? Um, ITT, IDCS, IDCS, ITT, Let let's go back again. Let's come back. For example, isn't that like a web page code? Now this is the URL. Now this is the website. This URL. This is the website, yes. right? Now it is being broken down. Okay into what we call the protocol. Then we have what we call 
the website address. Look at it right here, right? The protocol, the website address. Oh, wait. Sorry, sir. Yes? It's the file name 2193780. Yes. The file name is the item. Okay. The, the file name is what is going to display. That's the file name. That's why we have this, for example. Now, for Wait, this now, so does that mean that it is the folder that is IGTC, ICT, your folder? Yes, yeah, that's the part. What you call your folder, which is the web page. Then the file name is the item on the web page. Thank you. Uh -huh. So, here now you can see that this protocol, this is the website address, right? So this is your domain host, domain name, domain type. Then this is what? Your path. This is what? The last one. The last one is usually what? The file name. It's usually the file name. And that's what we have it here. Now, the next one is write down only the parts of the URL, which is the folder where the teaching guide is stored. So what is the answer? So what's the answer for the B part? Okay, sir. So I think is IGCSC ICT U four one seven. Correct, because that is the part. That's why. That's why I said. Try you, you guys not getting confused. That's the folder, right? Oh, excuse so, me, sir. Yes. That's right. So what is the ICT IGCSC part? What's that part called? This one. This one is the part. Yes, this is the part. So it is the folder, then the part, then the file name. So the folder is also like the path. The, the, the path is the web page, right? That is displayed. Why this right here is the item on the web page. So invariably, this is the folder, and this is what is found inside the folder. I don't know if, if that is clear. So in fact, what you, yes, let sir. me break this down. So this is the protocol. This is the protocol. This right here is the website address. This is the domain host. This is the domain name. This is the domain type. This is the path. This is the file name. Is the slash. Use the slash to know. The slash. Whether they whether they dash 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 it doesn't mean this is how you know it. You understand? So okay, with that, I'm going to test you for the next one. So the C part. Write down only the part of the URL which is the domain name. So what, what is the answer? Domain name is what? Um, excuse me, sir. Can I go back to the? Thank you. So what is the domain name? Um, Cambridge International. Simple, perfect. That's the only sense why we are having the class. Because if you are saying let's do answer, let's do max scheme, we're just wasting our time. Because you need to understand what it is. So anytime it comes out in any fashion, that's the one for you. That's why it is. Anytime it comes out in any fashion, you know how to attempt it. And you go to bed sleeping, knowing fully where that. No examiner is going to rob you of your math. Okay. Now, explain what is meant by HTTPS. The first thing is one mark. The first thing that comes to mind is you can say a HTTPS simply means hypertext word transfer protocol word secure. You will see this in what communications as well. I'm going to show you. It is also what a secure internet protocol. Let's look at it here. HTTPS. 
Now this search engine. Look at it. Protocol, which is usually in what? In HTTP or what? HTTPS. I think they, did they explain it here? I think they did, but they did, but it's in chapter eight. I think it's in chapter eight. Let me go back to chapter eight. I think it's in chapter eight. Another secure socket. Can you see it? Now, there's more data that bind to, yes, this is, but when you saw the browser, it shows the green padlock and the HTTPS protocol ensures secure connection from a web server to a web browser. So you can see that it's a secured internet protocol, right? It's a secured internet protocol. Okay. Hmm. It says it's creating a spare, a spare sheet of airport for a project. Okay. Now this practical work, right? In exam, you not you not have laptop. <laughs> so but we have we have been doing this. So let's see what we can do. Um it says it's creating a spare sheet of airport for a project. The formula in G2 is in your exam, they might give you X lookup. It's the same thing. So don't get ten stop. It is the same thing. If you see X, you cannot say yay. No, it's the same thing, right? X to copy you have um, what's that? Um, let me see if I can get it. Let me just see if I can get it quickly. So you have equals to x lookup so you have the lookup value right comma obviously lookup value comma the lookup array and the return array simple lookup value lookup array return array lookup value what's that value is going to look it up in the array if, if it has it it's going to return the matching array of that lookup simple okay so if the lookup value is here the lookup array is here is going to return what this array now that we have this now for vlookup this is the lookup value this is the table array column index and exact match abi explain in details what the formula in G2 does? We have answered the question. Simple, format, straight up. Now, let's look at it. Wait, now, F2 is what? The lookup value is what? Now, what you do now is simple. See, when it comes to practical aspects in theory, rejoice. Because there are so many ways to explain it, you have your mark. When it comes to, I, I, when my students see practical questions, they always rejoice. Because it's always, the best time. Right? Now, for the F2, F2 lookup value is what? Airport name. Now, watch this. What's the airport name? We have airport name. So, F2 now, this is the airport name, Abby. So, airport name, which is what? MI. Now, it's going to look for MI here. MI is what? Remember, this is now going to be what? Now, now, obviously, this is relative. This is relative. You sometimes you will query questions. 
<laughs> it's relative because normally this should be obviously if you are replicating, then this should be absolute. But it's fine. Right? And obviously, your lookup value also should also be absolute. Right? In replication. But then again, there are cases where we can, since it's just a straight up question, let's keep it like that as much as possible. Now, so, A2 to B9, you can see it's A2 to B9. So, the lookup value is what? Milan, which is what the airport name, then the table array. So, it looks up in the range of what? A2, which is the code and the name. Then, the column index, which is what? The corresponding value. Column index simply means the column. Where is that Milan found? Where is it found? Remember, vertical lookup moves from left to right. Don't forget. <laughs> from left to what? To right. So it is the lookup value. The column index is going to be what? To find the corresponding value from what? The second column. And then it has to be an exact match. The moment you key it in, it will come out. Okay? It's going to come out like that. That's what it means. Okay? Simple. Any question? Fine. It's a recorded class as well, so you can always listen to it over and over again. It's a recorded class. Now, before this spreadsheet can be used, Data needs to be entered to test the spreadsheet. There are three types of test data. Normal, abnormal, and extreme. Now, this is chapter seven. Under design, development, and work testing. What we call system life cycle. And I think I've showed you this, but for the purpose of this class, let's go to chapter seven. Yes, right here. Somewhere here. Can you see that? Uh -huh. That's what they are. Now, for explain what is meant by these three types of test data. That's three marks. So they're explaining just to explain. Normal data, they are within what? Um, the range of what acceptability. Abnormal, they are outside the range of acceptability. They simply means that they are incorrect data, as simple as that. Extreme, they are the boundary or at the limit or the edge. And they return, they have two end values, the beginning or the ending. Okay. Explain using examples the differences between a function and a formula. Good, that's a very good question. How many marks? Six. Difference between function and formula. You will see this in chapter 20 in the textbook. Let's check. Chapter 20 in the textbook. Chapter 20. How many of you have read chapter, <laughs> chapter 20? Okay, I know everybody watching this right now is going to say, not me, not me, <laughs> not me. But I, I know. I know. Um, Chapter 20, let's see. Chapter 20. Yes. You are going to see it here. I want to be showing you guys where you see these questions on the test. So you guys will not think that maybe they are, they are manufacturing answer. They are not all from your test. You are the one that is not reading. Okay, look at it here. Um, this is the order at which it goes. Order of mathematical operation. So we have bracket force, all indices, divide and multiply, add and subtract. So it's bit mass. We call it bit mass.
Can you see this? What are formulas and functions? A formula starts with what? An equal sign. It could, be simple, it could be a simple formula using what? Mathematical operator, such as equals to B, B1 plus B2. Okay? A function has what? A predefined name, such as what? Sum or average, to perform a particular what? Calculation. A function has what? A predefined name, such as what? Sum or average. To perform what a particular what calculation that's one way a function is also what an operation built into what the spreadsheet oh there are many types of uh, uh, functions that goes way beyond the, your scope okay another one is you could also talk about so with what i've done i've splitted it a formula Let's go to formulas. A complex formula using next statement. So a formula is a statement, right? It's an equation. A formula can contain function. Can you see that? Or a formula including fun a formula can also contain function. But functions are what? Predefined names, right? Such as what? Sum or average to perform a particular what? Calculation. So you can give examples of formulas equals to B1, uh, B, B, B1 plus B2. Examples of function, your sum, average, count, right? So functions are inside formulas. Okay, so with what we have said, they will reach up to six now, right? So when we, when they talk about differences, right, it simply means there are six abi. So how do we divide it? Two functions, two formulas. One one examples each. You are good to go. The completed file could be. Could have been created using a database. Describe two reasons why databases are used in certain applications rather than spreadsheets. Let's describe it. Oh, the completed files could have been created using. They are talking about that question. This question here. Is the database? They're not. They're, they're not asking us why. Give us two. Then we should give two reasons why database are used in set applications rather than spreadsheets. Now, for database, we have relationships, so we don't have to use lookup anymore. If we have, if we database, what we we'll do is two tables. Need to be two tables. On a table will be here, on that table will be here. So if we have Milan, this will now automatically form the, the way we have Mil, we have an airport name, all this will show. So they can be used to create relationship. Can you to create form? Where the person we have to type the name, right? And whatever he's searching for can also come out. We can also use to create reports. We cannot use it to create reports. So whatever you can use database to do, that's what you start mentioning it. Data is easier to manage in a database than in spreadsheets. Another thing is that it can reduce data, data duplication. Data redundancy is reduced. Okay. So how many marks is that one? Six marks. Whoa. Have I mentioned up to six points? It has more greater security than than spreadsheets. I think that's during pressure of relationship, you can enforce data integrity. 
That simply means that we cannot be able to manipulate the database, right? You can say, so that database will be of integrity, right? Enforced. Refresher integrity, we call it refresher integrity. Because when you are creating a relationship, you have three of them. Refresher integrity, cascading, um, adding, cascading, delete, I think. Yeah, but two cascading, one refresher integrity. That means that you cannot just delete anything on the database once it's linked. Unlike a spreadsheet, you don't have to delete anything. And if you two marks, sorry, you see, two marks. Or even cut my brain, if two marks. The prolonged use of computers can cause several health problems, particularly when sitting down and using monitors. The prolonged use of computers can cause several health problems, particularly when sitting down and using monitors. Discuss the strategies that you have developed to minimize health risk, which only relates to what sitting down and using monitor. How many marks is this? Jesus, it's marks. <laughs> the prolonged use of computers can cause several health problems, particularly when sitting down and using monitors. Now, two things when you are sitting down and we are using monitor. We have to discuss the strategy. So four four. We have to discuss the strategies that you have developed to minimize health risk when which only relate to sitting down and using the monitor. Now we are sitting down for a long time. This is a monitor. You need foot rest. Abi, foot rest. You need, you need economic chair. We are just thinking, we are just doing the obvious. Two marks first. You can see this in chapter five. Chapter five, the last subtopic. Like this. What I did is I'm reading like this, they are reading. Nice. That's not that the beginning. That's not the beginning of Thursday. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Just messing with you. Um, chapter five. Look at it here. Okay, so this is sitting in front of a computer screen for a long period. So, economic chair, I talk about foot rest. What again? Um, using LCD screens. Take frequent breaks. We are using the monitor for a long time. Take frequent breaks. Make use of anti glare screens. Get your eye tested. It's not a crime. Okay. Proper illumination. Appropriate illumination. Um. Uh, We we'll talk about teachable screens. Um, also, flickering is chief also not even monitor. Anti glare. I've talked about anti glare. So I don't know. I think that should be up to eight. So other ones you don't have to do. Now you can just fine tune it, right? And you get your mark. A car manufacturing company uses computer control robot to manufacture its cars. 
Now the question is, discuss the advantages and disadvantages to the company of using computer control robots rather than humans to manufacture the cars. Now, when it comes to IT application, you have to be very, very careful because it's an IT application, computer control system. I think that's the first subtopic on the IT application, computer control system. I want to be sure. Chapter six. Okay, not the first one, sorry. Communication is the first one. I think uh... okay, the third one. I said the question say advantages and disadvantages to the company of using. So what are the what is the let's talk about the advantages of the company using. Now, if you look at this textbook, you are going to see a value of using robots. But now they are specific to the company. Now they have, you are going to pick one that is to the company. They have higher productivity. There is less, it's less expensive in the long run. No need of paying wages, you are not paying any employee. They can work 24 hours. They can work in an environment that is harmful. They can carry out different tasks by fitting them to different M factors, attachments. They can do repetitive tasks. Now, disadvantage is they find it difficult to do unusual tasks. Right? Because they are programmed to do one thing. To the company, they don't cause unemployment, so it's not a disadvantage to them. To the company, if I if 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 just imagine teacher now, if the if the teachers you have a robots, uh, I use advantage of the school. Not advantage of the school now. It's, it's, you buy the robot once and for all. Okay, <laughs> you don't think of salary, so it's not advantage. Uh, they are they are specific. Um. Another thing is maintenance is expensive. Yes, can you see initial setup? It's expensive to purchase. It's an advantage now. Do you, you think to buy robot is easy? It's not easy to buy robot too. <laughs> like buying plane. Maintenance. There's usually uh other one is um they need constant observation. You have to observe robots. You have to observe robots, right? Which automatically will now increase the cost of what maintenance crew. You have to observe them so that they will not go, they will not go gaga on you. They go gaga on you. Uh, <laughs> the robot that was working for you will be a TV. Okay. So all these things, you don't have to see when it comes to IC ICT. I tell my students, play with it. When I say play with it, have fun with it. Don't see it as too strict. When you go to the exam hall, relax your mind. It's what you know. Just, okay, they will start coming. But when they tell you now, you are not doing uh, forming bosses in the exam, taking it too seriously, and you have issues. Just be mild. If you cannot understand it in, your, in that question, see how you can re rephrase it to your own understanding put it on that scenario right what kind of company tesla how is tesla what are the advantage of using robot in building car and it's advantage of using robot to building car talk about tesla okay 
And before you know it, you start having the points. So three marks, three point, three, uh, six marks, three, three, or four, two, or two, four. But at least there must be an advantage and a disadvantage to get your full marks. There must be answers for both of them. Question 12. Different methods can be used to analyze a system. Different methods can be used to analyze a system. Discuss the benefits and drawbacks of analyzing a system by observing staff rather than looking at the current system documentation. Now that's chapter seven, system life cycle. So we have how many four of them, Abi? Is it four? Uh, uh, let's look at it. We have analysis, design, development and testing, implementation, documentation. Evaluation, that's seven. Development and testing, they are broken down, so it's seven. Now, now I'm talking about analysis. On the analysis, we have various ways of analyzing. We have by observation, by questionnaires, by interviewing, and by looking at the existing documents. Please, I hope these things, these things are relatable. You can relate to it. Because I want to believe you have read your textbook. Okay? You have read your textbook. I was going to stop here. You have exam tomorrow, so I won't stress you. We're going to stop here. After this stop, after this question, we'll stop here. Because of your exam you're having tomorrow. Now, um, how many marks is it? Six marks. So that's three, three. Benefits and drawbacks. So let's talk about the benefits. Of analyzing now, but let me show you. It's right here. Question six, like I said. Question seven. So I can see what I'm talking about. The textbook is exciting to read, though. <laughs> so it's not magic. I be just it's not magic. It's exciting when you read it, you enjoy it. Okay. If it's not exciting, I will tell you. That's why. Why? That's why. Even when I'm teaching, I'm using the textbook to teach them. The third edition is actually exciting to read. It's better than Z notes. If you know what to read, that's why my own is to show you where and where to read. So you don't have to read everything. I'll show you which area and which area to read, and then you'll be, good, you'll be good to go. So this is analysis. Now, in analysis, we have the process. In the process, we have you can research, you can identify. Set the current system, identify the input and output, what processes takes place, problem with the current system, user requirements, the information requirements, identify the hardware and software. Now, to analyze the current system, which is the first one, to analyze the current system, you need four ways observation, questionnaires, interviewing, and looking at the existing documents. Okay, or the existing. So, say, look at this system, examination of the existing document, the same. Now, for observation, right? Observation is the benefit. You obtain reliable what? data. You get an overview of the system. And that is that it is relatively inexpensive because it only involves what? The analyst. Okay? Another one is all inputs and output of the coin system are seen. We analyze it. Now, another one is they said benefits and drawbacks of analyzing the system by observing staff rather than looking. So, observing. So, what is the advantage of observing? So, for observing, now this is it here. When they say discuss the benefit and drawback, you get your full mark. We need to talk about both. If either you talk about the benefits of the 
observation and then drawback of looking at existing system or talk about the benefits of of the uh, of looking at existing system and then drawback of observation but there must be if you talk about the benefit and drawback of observing it's half mark that is why this class is important it's half mark to get your full mark right discussion must have there must be discussions on observation and looking at existing system to get your full mark now for disadvantages, people are generally what uncomfortable being what who don't like even even if I write an exam, internal exam, and I'm invigilating, let's say I'm invigilating uh, English, and I'm watching your essay. You close your work. You don't want me to see your essay. You don't want me to see your essay. Okay. Now, on that thing is workers perform tasks. That can contravene standards, right? So they may not want to do this. They may be working below standard. So when they when they are being watched, right? They will, they will want to, right? Although they are doing their work, so they may they may feel so ah, like this. But when they are being watched, they want to keep up to, you know, to ensure that the work is being done at the right time. Another thing is, for looking at this system, this method allows the information to be obtained that is not possible with any other method. Another advantage about the looking at existing document is that the analysis can see for themselves how the system is being operated. It's a manual. They have the manual, the, the blueprint of the system. They can see how the system is being operated. Another one is that it is very, the advantage that is very time consuming. It's time consuming because of the analyst time needed. It's expensive. They will charge more. You have to pay more for that, right? Probably you may even need more than one analyst to actually do that. Okay, so we're going to stop here because of your your um, the exam you're having tomorrow. And in our next class, we'll look at the part three, and then we'll go to something else. So thank you very very much. And please, I'm going to send the video um, to the classroom so that you can go through it as much as possible. And um, that can be done. Thank you. I'm going to stop um, recording now.